Hey, Audacity friends, welcome back to the Audacity Bootcamp. My name is Mike Adams. Hey, in this episode, I want to talk to you about sync lock tracks. Sync lock tracks in Audacity are a very effective way, a very good tool, a very powerful tool, if you have multiple tracks in your project that you need to keep synchronized together in time. In other words, you've got one speaker and another speaker dialoguing back and forth, and you want that dialogue to be in sync in the final product. Sync lock tracks is a good way to do that. So I'm going to show you how to use sync lock tracks in this video. And I'm also going to show you how to use uh, sync lock tracks in relation to the label track. You can use a label track to separate synced tracks into groups of sync tracks. So I'm going to show you how. Let's go. This screen that I have open before us just has some random waveforms in it. They're really not related to each other. Some of them I just cut and pasted in in order to illustrate uh, sync lock tracks to you. And if I go into the tools toolbar and I grab that time shift tool, you can see that I can move these waveforms independent of each other. There's really nothing synchronized. It doesn't matter what I do. You know, I can move them wherever I want to go. But if I turn on sync lock tracks, that whole story changes. And to turn on sync lock tracks, simply go up to the tracks drop down menu and click sync lock tracks. And as soon as I do, sync lock tracks is on and all of my uh, tracks are synchronized together. I know that they're synchronized together because down here in the track header, in the bottom right corner of each track header, there's this tiny clock emblem that suddenly appeared. I can also go back to my selection tool. And if I select through part of a waveform, you'll see that it paints those little clocks on the other tracks that are synchronized in this group, meaning that all three of these tracks are currently synchronized together. Now if I go up and I grab the time shift tool, and let's come up here to this top um, waveform somewhere, just anywhere, and I'm going to click the mouse and hold it. And as I drag it, you'll see that it's dragging all of them together except that bottom one there on the right, we're gonna talk about in just a second. But you can see that these tracks are sync locked together, and as I move one of them, and it can be any one of them, they all move together. Now the reason why this rogue waveform down here on the bottom right doesn't seem to be doing anything, in fact, let me show you, if I come down here and grab it, I can kind of move it all around the place and nothing else mo is moving. Even though it says that the tracks, all three of these tracks, are synchronized together as uh, symbolized by the little clock icons there. This waveform here, I can move around. This is something that you need to be aware of. A fragment of a waveform in your project isn't synchronized to other waveforms unless it's in the same time slot. In other words, if I bring this waveform over into this area here where it's underneath or lined up with one of the other waveforms and let go of it, which I just did, I released it with my mouse. Now it's synchronized. If I grab it now and try and move it back, everything moves with it because I moved it underneath or overlapping another waveform within the project. And as soon as I did that, it synchronized uh, that section of waveform to the other waveforms. So that's something you need to be aware of and you need to be watching out for when, it, when we're talking about sync lock tracks. But let's suppose uh, for just a moment that you have these three tracks in here, and you really only want the top two to be synchronized together. The bottom track, you don't really want it synchronized with the top two tracks. Well, there's a way around that. And the way around that is the label track. So if we come up again to the tracks drop down menu, and this time we select add new, and then we, we select a label track, it puts a brand new label track at the very bottom of my project. Now, if I move that track up one, where it's between the top two tracks and that bottom track, I can use it as a separator. In other words, as soon as I put that label track in there, those top two tracks are synchronized apart from that bottom track. The bottom track's all on its own now. Let me show you what I mean. If I come up to one of these top two tracks and I move it, now it's only moving what's in those top two tracks. The bottom track is unaffected because the label track acts as a separator for sync lock tracks for groups of sync lock tracks. The bottom track is still synchronized, but it's synchronized to itself. So if I come down with my uh, time shift tool and I grab one of those waveforms in that bottom track and move it, you can see that 
They're going to move independently of each other because it's the only track in that group and there's no other audio and sharing the same time slot or overlapping the same time slot. And so these waveforms, I can move these around all day long independent of those top two tracks. And yet sync lock tracks are still turned that bottom track. If I go back up to my selection tool and grab it and bring it down here and put it in this track, you'll see that the little clock emblem appeared in that uh, track header as well, meaning that that track is synchronized, but it's only synchronized to itself at this point because it's the only track in the group. But this is a good way to make groups of tracks that you want synchronized apart from other groups of tracks within your project. Now, if I come down and select that bottom track and I do a command C to select the audio within that track on a Windows computer, of course, it would be control C. And then I come back up to my tracks drop down menu and I'm going to add a new mono track. It puts it right down there and you can see that my clocks appeared in that upper track now. These two tracks are synchronized together. If I do a command V and on Windows, of course, it's control V and I paste in what I just copied from that other track. Now, if I come back up to my time shift tool, you can see that these sections of audio are synced together. As I move one of them, they both move. And again, they're independent of each other in the sense that there's nothing connecting the waveforms within the tracks themselves, and yet they're synchronized track to track. And so now I've got two groups of tracks, two groups of synchronized tracks in my project separated by that label track. One other thing you can do is minimize that label track. If you start doing a lot of this and you get a lot of sync tracks together, sometimes that label track really takes up some screen space and some real estate that you don't want it to do. So you can minimize those label tracks. You can also add as many label tracks as you want to in your project. There's no limit. So if you have a project where you need to synchronize tracks, but not all your tracks, you want to synchronize groups of tracks to do different things, this is how you would do it. And you would use that label track to separate groups of synced tracks. And before I let you go, let me show you what this looks like in a real project. I'm going to go up to my window here. And I'm going to look at my template. I have a template set up here in this other window. And this is an actual real podcast that I do. This is just the template for that podcast. There's nothing really in it. You can see that at the top, I have my intro narration and my intro music. And those two things are synchronized together. Again, if I go up to the time shift tool and I grab the music and move it around, you can see that the narration goes with it. And so I know that those are always in sync. The next thing down is that label track separating what's below the label track from what's above the label track. And the tracks below that are my outro music and my outro narration. And so if I grab those with my time shift tool and move them, you can see that they move together independent of anything else in the project. And then following that, I've got another label track below that. And then I've got what's going to be the podcast between me and my co-host. I record that in my Zoom H6 and I import it into this template. And then I do my post-production work and my mastering work here in this template. And then I rename it to whatever that episode is. But this way, I'm not, I'm not creating over and over and over again my intro and my outro. I've got it in a template. And in a future video, we'll talk more about templates. But for right now, just know that that label track is a good tool. And this is one way that you might want to use it. If you have groups of tracks that you want synced together, independent of other groups of tracks within your project, the label track is a good way to do that. Something that you always want to keep in mind with sync lock tracks is that that's a global feature within Audacity. In other words, once you turn on sync lock tracks, it's always on until you turn it off. In other words, if you open another project that perhaps didn't have sync lock tracks in the first place, but you open it up with sync lock tracks on, now all of a sudden that project has the tracks sync locked as well. So keep in mind, it's a global feature. Sync lock tracks is on until you go turn it off. And so I recommend turning it off after each project in order to keep your sanity and to help you to better keep track of what's going on in your projects. Hey, I introduced label tracks to you in this video and in the next video, I'm going to show you more about the label track and how to use it not only as a way to group synced tracks together, but to actually use it as a label track. So that's coming up in the next video. I'll see you there.